All right, so today it's foundation Friday. This is where I try out a new foundation every single Friday on my channel. I wish you guys could see my hands down here because what are they doing? I'm like this right now. Today is another throwback foundation, L'Oreal True Match Foundation. I like to do these videos every now and then on products that I have tried out before, but I've just never made a video on for whatever reason. I wanna say about five, six years ago. This was one of my go-to foundations. I haven't used this foundation for at least a couple years and my skin was a lot different back then. It wasn't nearly as oily as it is now. My acne five or six years ago also definitely wasn't as bad. So I wanna try this out again right now with my current skin condition and see what I think of this. I don't have a video yet on the L'Oreal True Match Lumi, so let me know if you guys would wanna see that one. But I do have videos on all of the more recent popular L'Oreal foundations like the Total Cover, Pro Glow, Pro Matte, all of those. So you can just search it on YouTube and it'll come up. As far as the number of shades available, this product definitely takes the cake for the drugstore. This comes in 33 shades. They do come in different undertones, which is really great. I have all three of the lightest shades from the different undertones. So I have N1, W1, and C1. I'm gonna start swatches of all three of the shades I have compared to some other drugstore foundations and just some of my go-tos. All right, so swatch time. The first three are the L'Oreal True Match foundations and the three lightest shades in each undertone. So right here is W1, C1, and N1. Next over is the lightest shade of the CoverGirl Vitalist Foundation, 705. The fact that that's the lightest shade is comical. Maybelline Fit Me Matte and Poreless in 110. Dermacol 208 and Laura Geller Cover Lock in Porcelain. I have reviews on all of these foundations. This foundation retails for about between eight and 11 bucks, depending on where you get it. It has one fluid ounce product, which is standard for foundation, which is kind of crazy because it looks like it's a freaking mini bottle. Like compared to some other foundation bottles, it looks like you would get less product, but it does have a standard fluid ounce. I'm not super into the packaging of this because it can get pretty messy since you do just have to pour it out. There's no pump or anything. So reading some of the claims on this it says it's formulated with precise match technology so you can control coverage and fine-tune it ultra pure formula contains no oils fragrances or pore clogging fillers all you see is beautiful radiant flawless skin it has SPF 17 it says the coverage is light to medium I find that you can really build this up you can kind of customize it to whatever you want which is great it says it's for all skin types again I have combination skin with cystic acne I get pretty oily throughout the day and I think that's everything. So even though this technically isn't a first impression, I do the application and wear test and everything just so you can see how it goes on, how it wears throughout the day, and what I think of it right now, since again, I haven't used this for a while. If you like Foundation Fridays and you enjoy this video while you're watching, why am I so freaking tight right now? Don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you wanna see my thoughts on the L'Oreal True Match Foundation, how it applies and wears throughout the day, you're in the right place, just keep watching. Okay, so right now it's about 9.30. It's October 10th when I'm filming this. I have not started Accutane yet. I've already washed and moisturized, primed my face. I primed half my face. This side again, the Laura Mercier Foundation Primer. So in the past, both W1 and C1 have not quite been the exact shade for me. So I wanted to try N1. So I just picked this up a couple days ago. This is the shade N1. So they have neutral, warm, and cool. I usually prefer neutral or cool undertones. This shade looks like it might work. It looks a bit dark. So I haven't used this foundation for, I wanna say a couple years. When I was living abroad, I actually brought like 10 bottles of this W1 with me. So this is pretty much what I wore. So I'm gonna start out with the dampened sponge on this side. I can't remember if I like this better with the brush or sponge. This one for me, I definitely need to build up if I want better coverage. It's nice though because it doesn't look cakey or heavy when you go to build it up. So one layer with the sponge, I got about medium coverage. So I'm gonna take my Sigma F80 Flat Kabuki on the other side and let's see if there's a difference in coverage. The finish seems to be actually a bit dewier on this side that I didn't prime because the primer kind of mattified this side a little bit. So I like how the finish of this actually looks on the not prime side just because I do like a bit more dewy, but we'll see if they wear any different throughout the day. Definitely more matte on this side though. I got a little bit better coverage on the brush side, but I feel like you can kind of see my texture a bit more up here than on the sponge side and I do have more acne on the sponge side right now. So I'm gonna do my usual, go back in with a brush to build up the coverage, but then kind of smooth it out with no product on the sponge. So I'm just gonna add a tiny bit of product and build this up on the areas where I need more coverage. This foundation builds very well. Like you can see that looks full coverage now down there and it still doesn't look heavy or anything. It's even covering my neck acne really well, which usually I have to go in with concealer to cover. I'm gonna go back in with the sponge and just smooth everything out. There's no product on this. 
By the way, that is not a hickey, it is just a heat rash. All right, so there we have it, the two layers. My acne's still coming through a bit up here, but the rest of my face looks like pretty much full coverage, low full coverage. I like how it looks on my skin. I think I actually like the not primed side better right now, just because that's the finish that I usually like. I think it looks a little bit more skin-like. Right now it's 9.46, let's call it check-in time, 9.45. This one I can kind of go either way, setting my face and not setting my face. It doesn't feel like it's totally set down, but it does feel like it's set down enough to where I could blend powder products on top. I think I might really lightly set it with my Laura Geller powder that I usually use. So I'm gonna do the rest of my makeup and I'll be right back. Okay, so it's now 10.27, so 10.30. We're calling the check-in time, 9.45 again, since that's when I finished up my face. All I did was super lightly set it with the Laura Geller Balance and Brighten powder, which is looking good. It doesn't look too heavy. But again, I still think the not prime side is actually looking better. It's already starting to crease a little bit on this side of my face. As I was doing the rest of my makeup, I could actually see this looking really nice with the CYO Long Lasting Foundation. This is super dewy and I feel like it would make the finish of this look really nice, so I'm gonna try mixing those. But for the rest of my makeup, for bronzer, I used the Fair to Light. I feel like I've used this in, oh shit, did I just use that in the last two Foundation Fridays? Maybe. Again, I'm filming these in the span of like a couple of weeks that you guys are seeing over a couple months. So I'm probably using some of the same products because I'm just into them right now. But I use this bronzer. I use the All Made Nude Mauve Blush. This one is really pretty for the fall. Check out this freaking highlight today. This is the BH Cosmetics Spotlight Palette. If you like an intense highlight, this is gorgeous. I don't feel like it totally overemphasizes my texture, but I just went in with the shade Vivid, which I think is my favorite in the palette. And then for the rest of my eye makeup, I used the Morphe 3502 palette. I just went in with these two shades right here. These are the BH Studio Pro 202. I feel like they're what Ardell Demi Wispies look like on other people, but they never look like that on my eyes. And these are a few bucks on BH Cosmetics. This is the shade FBF by Pure Cosmetics. So pretty. So that's everything. Again, the check-in time is 9.45. I'll see you guys in a few hours in natural lighting. Okay, so it's now 2.35, so it's been on for almost five hours. I just dropped my camera, so thank God that this still works because I've already gone through two of these. So I'm getting some pretty intense upper lip creasing right now. I'm gonna zoom you guys in. And creasing around the nose, but really this upper lip is like freaking intense. But the rest of my face still looks good. I'm starting to get a tiny, tiny bit of separation right here on the forehead, but overall looks fine. Again, if I were to wear this like tomorrow, I would definitely do a couple of things different. I'd probably still do two layers, but I would just use majorly like dewy and moisturizing products underneath and on top. And I might even just do one layer in the spot conceal just to avoid some of like the creasing and just heaviness. But overall, I don't think it looks like bad right now, but I'll see you guys at the end of the night. Okay, so it's now, 8.06, so it's been on for over 10 hours. I actually think this lighting right here is perfect for check-ins. Why well, haven't I been doing this? I don't have the ring light on, I just have one of the softbox lights on, but I feel like you can pretty accurately see what I'm seeing. I actually do think there's a little difference between the primed and not set primed side. My nose definitely looks oilier over here. On my forehead, I have a little bit of creasing and it seems to be kind of wearing off a little bit up here, but my oil overall right now looks pretty good for 10 hours. I'm not overly oily. I have a tiny bit of shine on the center of my forehead, which is normal. It is separating quite a bit, I just noticed, over here. Here. I think you guys can see that, but yeah, there's quite a bit of separation around my mouth and chin over here and on this side as well, kind of just all over my chin area. Like I said, I haven't used this foundation for a couple years. Your skin can change over the years. Mine definitely has. I still like this one. I just don't think I would use it with that powder and I would definitely use it with some kind of moisturizing dewy setting spray. I think that could give it more of like a skin finish, like I said. I do remember it being like a little bit more dewy, radiant looking, which I don't feel like I really got when I put it on today. So don't know why that was. Not my favorite foundation or anything at the moment. If you've tried this foundation, let me know what you think of it down below. What's your favorite way to wear it? But if you enjoyed this video and you like Foundation Fridays, don't forget to give this a thumbs up. If you're new here, you can join the Bayrito family and subscribe. I upload every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 6 p.m. Pacific time. Did I say at the time when I did this dragon? Yeah, I did, right? I don't even know anymore. Whoa, whoa. And I literally just almost fell over. Okay, I need to go. Love you guys. Thanks for watching. See you in my next video. Bye.